Hi everyone, Brian here from the Protocase team. For today's Prototech Tip, we're going to talk about design clearances. You need custom enclosures, parts, and panels made really quickly in quantities as low as one so that you can meet your critical deadlines and keep those projects moving. That's where we come in. Our custom manufacturing is fast, flexible, and easy. The most critical step of designing in sheet metal is to ensure that all of your manufacturing constraints are accounted for in your design. The worst thing you can do is design an enclosure and when it's time to assemble, you realize that the parts don't fit together. What is the best way to account for your manufacturing constraints? Clearances. Clearances refer to the amount of space required for the proper functioning of mating parts, fasteners, and other components within the design. Mechanical clearances must be carefully calculated to ensure that the sheet metal parts and components can be easily assembled, disassembled, and maintained without causing undue wear or damage. Failure to properly account for mechanical clearances can lead to production delays, increased costs, or even product failure. Clearances can be generally defined as the gap between two mating parts or the space provided between parts that need to fit together. These parts can be anything from your actual sheet metal bodies, screws fitting in clearance holes, or mounting components in your design. There are many different types of clearances in the world of sheet metal design here at Protocase. The first one we want to talk about is your cutting tolerance. We cut the majority of our parts here on fiber lasers. This computer numerically controlled machine uses optical fibers to create a laser beam that is extremely hot and is then used to cut through sheet metal stock. This machine has a plus minus 5 thou tolerance when cutting flat profiles. So what does this mean? If you have a piece of metal that you want to cut that is 1 inch by 1 inch, the possible ranges of the final sizes of the part could be anywhere from 995 thou to 1 inch and 5 thou. As always, when cutting parts with cutouts to fit components such as power supplies or PCB boards, we need to also allow for the component tolerance. This is typically component specific, so if you're trying to mount, say, an optical cable with plus or minus 5 thou tolerance, you want to allow for this clearance on all sides of the component. This can become tricky, but an important thing to remember if you have a circular component, such as an optical cable, you should actually double the tolerance and make the cutout 10 thou larger because there is tolerance around the entire perimeter. The next type of clearance I want to talk about is our bend tolerances. Most of our sheet metal flat patterns that we cut on the fiber laser then proceed to, the, to be deburred and then bent on one of our many bending machines. These machines all have a possible bend tolerance of plus minus 10 thou, which means if you're bending a one inch flange, it could be anywhere from 990 thou to one inch and 10 thou. This is probably our largest tolerance that needs to be accounted for and is the main reason why we typically design all of our assemblies with a minimum of a 10 thou gap between mating surfaces. The important thing to remember about bend tolerance is that with stacked or consecutive bends comes with increased bend tolerances. You need to account for this fluctuation in bend sizes in order to accommodate a mating part. More bends equals larger gaps between your parts. Another important tolerance to account for in your design would be powder coat coverage. Powder coat typically adds up to 3 thou of thickness to your parts. This can be particularly tricky when designing cutouts for components. You want to ensure that after we powder coat your part, the component still fits within the cutout. Again, if you're trying to accommodate a circular component, you'll need to make sure the clearance is doubled. The last clearance I want to touch on is screw clearances. A very common practice in sheet metal is mounting your parts together using self-clinching fasteners on one part and machine screws on the other. Each size screw has a tight, normal, and loose fit. Example, a number six screw could have a mounting hole that ranges from 144 to 170 thou. We typically mount our hardware in at Protocase with a fairly loose fit to ensure that after parts are cut and bent, the screws will still mount correctly. Again, if you have a large stack up of bends on a part that need to mount to one another, these screw clearances should be a loose fit. It is also a good idea to maybe slot your mounting holes in the direction of your bends to account for a worst case scenario. And that's it for this week's Prototech Tip. At Protocase, we are always here to help. So if you have any questions, concerns, or just want to discuss your organization's design requirements, just contact us. We would love to help you out. Thank you for watching this week's video. See you next time.